Hey guys, welcome back to Weekenders on the Water. Today we're here in the garage and today we're going to be installing this bilge pump on my 2017 Sea-Doo GTI SE130. So if you want to know how to do it, then you're in the right place. Make sure you stick around, check it out, hit that subscribe button, and let's go! All right, guys, so in case you didn't know, we are going to be taking these two jet skis to Bimini, Bahamas. And in order to get there, there's a number of things that we have to do to modify these jet skis, to get the equipment, just to get prepared for the trip. It's only about a 60 mile trip, but it is pretty dangerous. And so we wanna make sure that we have all the extra safety precautions we can. And one of those things that we're gonna need is a bilge pump on both jet skis. So I'm gonna start today here with the 2017. Um, I'm gonna get to the 2021 in a little bit later video. So kind of covers both types of modern sea -Dews. So this 2017 here is analogous to anything that's 2019 or older. And the 2021 will be like anything that's um, 2020 or newer. So, so if you stick around and hit that subscribe button, you get to check both installs out. All right, so this is my 2017 sea -Doo GTI SE 130. And my plan here is to do everything with as least invasively as possible. So that means that I'm gonna try my best to only cut holes where in places where I can easily fix them or at least easily hide them. Um, that way if I ever wanna revert back to stock, I can. Uh, I probably won't. I don't see why I would. But something about drilling holes through OEM parts kind of bothers me. I, I like to keep things as stock as possible. All right, so this is the build pump that I went with. It says it's an all-in-one pump and switch system, which is kind of true. So I've taken it out of the box here. I've also hooked up this um, bilge pump plumbing kit that I bought separately. So again, it's not quite all-in-one. It's got a pretty long set of wires here. It's got a switch in there, a floating switch already. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that, but we do need a manual switch. And that's why there are three wires coming off of this. So one for uh, gr power, ground, and then, um, you know, you can do like an auto on off option and we'll use this switch here. So, so not too bad. I picked this thing up on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below uh, where you can get your own if you want to purchase one just like this, as well as all the other accessories. By the time you add, start adding in all the other accessories, plus the, like the hardware and things that you need to do this, it gets to be a little over a hundred dollars, I think per ski but really not a bad investment to make sure that your ski doesn't sink while you're out there in the middle of the ocean. So the wiring here is pretty simple. You got a black wire, you got a brown wire, and you got a brown white wire. So black wire goes to the battery, uh, brown wire goes to the positive, and that's, that's manual mode. And then if you do the white brown wire to the positive, then you get automatic mode, which when this float switch is activated, which it has a little trip over here, then it turns on. So these pumps are submersible. So with it hooked up to the battery in automatic mode, I'm going to go ahead and submerge it. And now you can hear the battery it kicking on. I made quick work of that and dumped all that water straight down into our bucket. And as soon as the water's gone, yeah, it turned off. So there's still a little bit of water in there. Looks like probably about about a quarter of an inch. I mean, overall, not too bad. It's kind of what you expect from a bilge pump. So anything, any water that gets in the hull that's more than about a quarter of an inch is gonna get sucked right out and fast apparently too. This is 1100 gallons an hour. So it's it's a pretty powerful pump. It's the most powerful one. But again, if you're gonna buy one, why not just get the most powerful, suck as much water out <laughs> as possible. If you're taking on water, if that carbon seal goes, uh, I'm definitely gonna be glad to have this one instead of just some little puny one. So looks like it all works pretty much as expected. Let's go ahead and dive straight into the install. All right, so here's the back of the Sea-Doo here. Uh, and the lowest spot is actually like right here, right in front of this, you know, this is your carbon seal drive shaft. So right in front of that is kind of the lowest spot directly underneath the engine. Uh, unfortunately, there's not quite enough room to get it there. So what there is a spot right here next to it, which is a pretty close second. So that's where I think I'm going to start by mounting it. I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to just try to clean up some of the grease and everything that's down in here. A lot of sea -Doo lube. And give it just a quick wipe with the paper towel and then we'll go over it with some alcohol. All right, and now I got a little bit of alcohol in this one. Some rubbing alcohol, so we'll go ahead and rub that down in there. 
right, and just a dry test fit. So because the float is on the right side of this, let's see right there, right there. Uh, so I want I want it to face forward and be, uh, so I want it to face forward. So I'm gonna place it right about there, and it looks like there's gonna be plenty of room once it's in there securely, not bouncing around. But we want to try to keep it away from the heat of the engine. We want to keep it away from the drive shaft, obviously. I don't want any wires getting wrapped up in there. And then also, this is my exhaust too. So you can see there is some plastic down here already. So I don't think it's going to get too hot in this area, but that's where we're going to go ahead and go for. And to mount this, they do make it fairly easy where the bottom comes off without any tools. You see it has a couple screw holes. I'm not going to be screwing directly to the fiberglass. I don't want to take the chance of running through it. Um, so what it says is you can do instead is you can actually just apply some adhesive. So for that, we've got some good old JB Weld. Uh, we're going to go with the Marine Adhesive. Five minute hold white two part epoxy. So we'll go ahead and mix that up. We'll get a generous helping on here and we'll just apply it. All right, so we've got that JB Weld applied. I want to make sure that that's on there, that you can go with a generous helping because we don't want this thing moving around. And I'm going to go ahead and reattach this to the main body here. So that way I just make sure that I have enough room for wherever it eventually ends up. All right, and then we'll stick it on down there and wait a couple minutes. All right, so while we're waiting for that to dry, I went ahead and got my wires here. I've got some leftover trailer wire. Uh, it's a little bit thicker than what I need, but it's fine as long as it's not thinner. Um, the, the owner's manual says you don't want to go any thinner than 18 gauge. So this is like 12 or something like that, I think. So we'll go ahead and use this. You can use whatever you know automobile wire uh, you've got is fine. So most people obviously would go with red or black um, if you've got that, but this just what I happen to have on hand, on hand, it's not really that big a deal. The color doesn't really make that much of a difference as long as you know what where it's going. So the battery on the 2017 is actually up front here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this false wall, and it's got some of these little it's got some of these little clips like you find in a in a car. So we pop those out. A little screwdriver, and then pop this thing down, in half. So that gives me access down here to the battery. So we got our positive and our negative. I'm gonna go ahead and just tap directly into those. All right, so wiring is gonna be fairly straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and use the green as my positive, the brown as my negative. Um, make sure that you pick up yourself an inline fuse. Um, so looking at the instructions, it says that this thing should only pull about 3.8 amps. So I went ahead and got a five amp fuse. Uh, and then we're just gonna go ahead and wire that in line with the positive. So got some butt connectors and then these will go attached to our battery. Make sure that you get the waterproof uh, connectors too. And this is, you know, water resistant. It says waterproof, but really it's, you know, it's water resistant, but uh, these are really gonna help. So get the marine grade waterproof uh, connectors. And I'm gonna go ahead and heat shrink those on. Next up, we're going to install the whole thing into a wire loom and then tape the ends. You know, I've seen a trick for this. Let me try it. All right, we'll give this a shot here. This is one of those hacks I've seen on the internet. So supposedly if you run a, a wrench down the wire, make it, e make it easier to get on the loom. So I guess the idea is that put the wrench down in there. And then I'm just going to zip it back and look at that. Okay. 
don't know if it's really a hack or if it, if it saves you much time at all. But that's the idea. Finish putting the loom on. All right, let's talk about switches here. So you need a three position switch. Um, so this one's got off is to the middle, you got on position one and on position two. Uh, so one of these is gonna be off, obviously off and then we'll go automatic and manual. Now, where do you want to put the switch? So a number of people will maybe put it up in here. I was kind of concerned that maybe stuff bouncing around the glove box might hit it accidentally. Um, I've seen people put it up here if you want to drill a hole there. It's not a bad spot. Um, and you know, again, I just I like things to kind of look clean. Uh, now that, so I was looking at maybe you could go here. Probably wouldn't be too bad. But I think what I ultimately settled on is you can go, you can actually go inside the engine compartment too. I see a lot of people just maybe tuck it down under here somewhere. This uh, mount here for the engine coolant is plastic and it's thin. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and stick it like right there. And it kind of works out because that's where these wires from the pump reach up to anyway. So uh, I need to run the power cables from the battery up front. And we're gonna come down along the side of the engine here. You can see that's where most of the other wires are. So I'm just gonna attach my loom to that and run it to back here to the switch. And then we're gonna go ahead and attach it here to the battery. All right, so now we've got our wires up front here. So I've gone ahead and taken the positive terminal off. So we'll go ahead and slip this one here under the positive side. So we'll read that it's positive first. Go under the other fuse box and attach the negative. All right, so now we'll see where we can zip tie these wires. I'll probably start with the first one where this other one is and just uh, go from there. All right, so now we've got our pump wires all up here. We've got our battery power wires up here. And it's even cool that they've, um, you can see this, there's even like already a place that holds this wire like by default. I don't know what's supposed to go there, maybe a drain tube or something, but um, fits this a 3 8 wire loom pretty well. So uh, just kind of measuring out, make sure that we got everything that we need here and then We'll go black to brown, and then the other three wires to our switch. Uh, so I'm just I'm gonna add the uh, terminators now on that, and I'll uh, use a, a butt connector for the black to brown.
So like I said, I'm gonna put the switch right here. So it's, it's pretty thin and pretty flat. I like that spot. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put some towels in the bottom of this hole just to kind of try to catch some of the shavings. I don't want a ton of shavings ended up in the bottom of this thing. All right, so that went through pretty easy. Uh, it's a three quarter inch bit, a three quarter inch hole. So we'll go ahead and feed our wires through now. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and attach power main power to the center. So we'll go ahead and we'll connect the brown and white one now to number one. And then we'll connect the solid brown one, the always on, to number two. All right, and then we'll just push it back in the hole that we made, I um, had to cut a little notch there. There's a notch on the switch to make sure that it stays in one position. I just took a little razor knife. And it's going to be a snug fit, but that's the idea. Alright. There we go. And now it's in. Right, let's give it a test run. No. Yeah, there it goes. So, one is on, two is auto. So with auto, if you flip the switch here, if I can reach it. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, now for the biggest question of all is where to put the water spout outlet on this thing. I was initially was thinking over here on the side, I think that there is enough room I can put it there. And I think it would look fine. It would, it would actually look pretty good, but I'm just, again, I'm concerned about, once you drill that hole, you can't undo it. Um, I've seen some people put them back here, but this is kind of sloped. Here may not be a bad spot, uh, but what I've seen some people do, and what I think is pretty slick, is if we take this logo off, We'll put it right through there, and then if we don't like it, we just slap the logo back on. I've already kind of been playing around with this. This logo is already fairly loose. So I think we're going to take that off, and then we're going to drill our hole right through there. All right, so that came off pretty easy. And then again, I think we'll just clean this area up. All right, so I got the nut here from the end of the of the outlet hole, and playing around with it. If it sits flush, or if it sits center on there, there's a lot of gaps on the side just from the way this is kind of shaped. But if I move it up just a tiny bit so it, that the bottom rests with with that, then it's um, it sits a lot more flush. So I think that's kind of where I'm going to go. I'm just gonna figure out a way to mount to mark that center. All right, so I've got the center line marked here where I want it to be. It's centered along the vertical axis and just a little high on the horizontal axis, and that's exactly where I want it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my pilot hole, uh, and then we're gonna get the hole saw. This is the moment. There's no turning back. Now we have a hole in the jet ski. Alright, now we got our inch and three eighths hole saw. So we're going to finish that hole up. Okay. 
There we go. Alright, so now we should be able to stick this thing through there. Yep, fits pretty good, looks pretty good. So, I think we'll probably want the tube face down, but yeah, there we have it. That'll be it. All right, so now we got some black waterproof silicone. I'm gonna go ahead and just apply a generous amount all around the whole thing. And we're gonna go ahead and insert the tube. Press it down and we'll just clean up a little bit of excess here. Alright, next we'll attach the nut on the underside. I didn't get a shot of myself ratcheting that thing down, but basically I got a big set of pliers and I had to get all up in this jet ski, like laying on top of it, both arms in there. So I couldn't really film it, but it's a little tight fit, but it's definitely possible. Just get your, get your pliers and, and crank it down. And once you do, it all looks really good. So we had some more uh, silicone pop out. I've gone ahead and cleaned that up, but overall I think I'm really happy with that. I like the way it looks. One last step and that is to attach the drain hose. So we're going to start by attaching it to the back and then uh, we'll figure out how we're going to route it up to the pump. Okay, so finally got the hose hooked up. So I ran it around and underneath this other line that's that carries water as well um, But behind the muffler and since this other line is made of a similar plastic It's got a I mean, it's got a, a tube inside, but if that plastic has melted I'm gonna assume that my line's not gonna melt uh, And we ran it way back there around up over this box and into Into the drain there. So that's basically it all right, so there you have it. It's all done and all buttoned up. Overall, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Overall, I really like the wiring job that I did. It looks OEM. You can't even tell what I put in versus what was already there. Um, I'm really happy with the placement of this in the back here. We'll give it a shot. We'll try. We'll test it out once we get outside. The only thing that maybe I, I would change is I'm not super happy with the way that that uh, outlet has a bend in it. I tried really hard to find one that was straight and black. Found plenty of straight white ones, um, but to find a straight black one, I at least on Amazon, I had a hard time. 
So maybe you guys will get better than better luck than I did. Um, but it, it'll work. It's it's kind of it's a little bent, but it's not really kinked that to the point where it's not going to work. Um, and you know maybe in hindsight, maybe I would have turned this pump around. The only thing, like I said, the reason I placed it this way is because the floats on that side. So if you turn it around, then the water's going to be higher to lift that float because it's kind of at a little bit of an angle. Um, but I think it'll be all right. Once I get these uh, jet skis outside. We'll fill this up with water and we'll test it out make sure it's all working as expected. Uh, and then we'll ride it for a while and and make sure that we don't burn a hole in that in that tube. The next morning. Here in the garage and today well, we're going to be installing this bilge pump on my 2017. All right, so first thing that we want to do First thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a shell down here to seashell. So these pumps are completely submersible. So I'm gonna go ahead and submerse it in this water and that float switch should activate. Put the camera with the lights a little tricky. So these pumps are submersible. So I'm gonna go ahead and submerse it in automatic mode. And there it goes. losing my paperwork so now for the biggest question of all is where to put the drain plug on this all right so now we got some black waterproof uh what do they call it? silicone 